channel, we've messed so much with the great giants of the skies. You know, planes like the Antonov N 225 that have landed on the smallest of runways and it didn't work at all for some reason. I mean, yeah, sadly, this plane was destroyed earlier this year. But we've also talked about the great 747, another ginormous plane, of course, next to the infamous A380 that I hated so much. Great. But a giant plane that we've never talked about before on the channel is, of course, the infamous Spruce Goose. A plane built in the 1940s that is bigger than modern planes. I mean, literally, its wingspan is 97 meters. That's like 300 feet, something like that. It literally is 10 meters longer than the Antonov N225 wing. So that's crazy. It's also pretty much the tallest plane ever built from as as tall as the A380. And even though it's a bit shorter than most of the modern big planes we know, the Spruce Goose is genuinely ginormous. And well, for a while now, we've had the Spruce Goose added to the Microsoft Flight Simulator. Yes, of course, and they added it in their 40th year anniversary. And actually, it is quite a decent model here. We can see those eight engines have been beautifully made to power this plane off into the skies. And something I found out out is that this plane uses a relatively low amount of runway here. A I mean, river or water body. I mean, yes, water does have a great resistance, but we go, we only need 18 knots to take off thanks to this ginormous wing. That's great. Oh, God. Okay, now gee, we've literally reached a level of bigness. Okay, great. You know what? This is a great symbol of the flying career of this plane as well, because for some reason, we're gonna find out later, this plane only ever had one flight that lasted like 30 seconds. Great, yes, a total failure of a plane was the Spruce Goose. So let's find out why later on. But first, let's let me go ahead and see the cockpit and maybe try to fly this plane, Jesus. Yes, come on, let's get capable out here. Here we go, full power, we can see this cockpit. And when I mean cockpit, I mean, it's literally as large as the cabin space of other planes. I mean, look at this. Got this huge, ginormous space. We can we can actually get inside here. A little, little Easter egg is this hat. I think that's from one of the builders. Huge, a little bit of an engineering panel. And here we can see just the passenger, little cabin space, the coffee machine. What doesn't this plane have? Okay, come on, let's take off. Here we go. Yes, finally we've reached some speeds. 130 knots. Yeah, well, definitely being one of the biggest planes in the skies, it's not the fastest at all. In fact, it's a bit strange to see a thing this big fly so slowly these days. Incredible. <laughs> hot air balloon, hot air balloon, hot air balloon, hot air balloon. Oh, yeah, there we go. We clipped that. The perks of having an incredibly large plane. And we've just taken off here from the Hudson River flying through New York. This plane is as large as some buildings. Let's maybe go ahead and have a bit of a change of location to a lake, because that would be interesting as well. Or maybe something small right here. Just a small little lake. I mean, you know, I always like how small lakes are literally the equivalent to small runways for seaplanes. Even though this plane was never meant for that. No, this plane was built during World War II and its mission was to transport troops and supplies across the Atlantic Ocean. And you know, back then this was a task that was very difficult to do. Ships couldn't do it because of the submarines of the Germans. No, they had to go over water and build this giant plane that was as big as a giant boat. I mean, it's technically still a boat, but that one, fl it flies. Great. Now, building such a large plane back in those days wasn't easy. I mean, engine power wasn't really quite there, which is why this plane has eight piston engines. And another fun fact is that this plane was completely built out of wood. I mean, of course, metals were in short supply in the war. And so they made this, this spruce goose, little wood. Great. Now, they constructed a single plane out of this beginning in 1943, but the plane took a few years to be completed in 1947. Thing is, though, by that time, the war had ended and no one needed such a plane anymore. And that's again why the Spruce Goose only made a single flight. Here we go. This was a single flight here. Last of 30 seconds here and just a few feet above the water before coming in for landing once again. It's more of a symbolic thing. And after just a few seconds long flight, they never flew this plane again. Mostly as well because this plane was super impractical. I mean, we're looking at eight engines, right? Those have to be maintained. We're looking at wood. Like, this is a giant wood construction. Literal, I, I'm, like, this was not sure if it was safe or anything. <laughs> Great. Also, like, just the hangar that this plane would need at the time. And 
the personal, this plane would have been way too expensive. Unnecessarily expensive. And by the way, ah, it doesn't matter. Like this plane just flies. Yeah, I mean, just this, like, this ginormous wing gives us so much lift here that we need no runway at all. No lake. You know, maneuvering <laughs> out of this mountain space is quite ridiculous. It literally looks like slow motion, but it isn't. This plane can fly at 80 knots, no problem. We're at flap zero. Flap zero. You know what? Maybe they should bring the spruce goose back. Great. All right, time for a smaller lake. Yeah, here we go. Just like a small, miserable alpine lake. There we go. Okay, here we go. <laughs> All right. I think what's going to be like the biggest deal here about this challenge now is the altitude that we're facing. 6,300 feet. That's not going to be easy on those little piston engines. Very thin air up here. Come on, we can do this anyway. Give it some performance. Yes. Little glacier lake with a bit of a dam here. Maybe we can get past the dam. Okay, you know what? I have a very big fat feel. Come on, let's put the flaps down fully. Flaps, come on. Yes. Okay, no, we're not making it. There's no way. Okay, we've died. Oh. Oh. Okay. The spruce skews, everybody. No problem at all. <laughs> Great. I like how this plane literally needs a pond to be challenged. Okay, come on. Here, let's go full power. On the spruce goose. Okay, nothing to worry about. Flaps full. Okay. All right. We're we reaching proper speeds. Pull up, pull up, pull up. Okay, I've crashed the spruce goose. Oh. Oh. Yeah! And look at this. This plane is flying right now. We're literally getting. We're 46 knots fast, so. Nothing to worry about. This plane is. It's like, it's, <laughs> Look at this, it's literally a helicopter. I don't mind. You know, I really like what Microsoft did here with this kind of project. Can we uh, take off just on a normal runway? I mean, if you were to put normal wheels to this plane, it would probably work not that poorly. I mean, obviously this plane was built as a seaplane because runways to host such a big plane just didn't exist. And uh, we're stuck to the ground. Yeah. Anyway, Microsoft did a really good job at representing this plane with a little Easter egg here, too. I mean, again, this is totally for free. There was no reason for them financially to make this. So this is nice. You know, it also has a very big honoring aspect because now you can do this transatlantic flight that Howard Hugh had always dreamed of and never accomplished. Now in the flight simulator. That is nice. Talking about honoring, you can of course visit the Spruce Goose still in the Evergreen Museum where it's been nicely maintained. So um, yeah, that's definitely a plane of big value in American aviation history. So yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching today's video and I'll see you guys tomorrow as always. Good night. Well, thank you so much to all the people who give me lots of monies, like Mariana, Ragings, Junk in the Trunk, Mike, John O'Brien, Derek, Matt, Sleepy Boy, Kelly Chaos, Ryland Williams, New York, Shadow, Ignuana, and Moritz Bohausen.